When soul singer and black activist Sam Cooke wrote the lyrics to his song, A Change Is Gonna Come, it was very direct and to the point. With some changes to it, the song was still digestible. In the year 2019, black folks continue to go through the change rather than direct the change. A community activist named Talik Ibn Rod has made an appeal similar to what Sam Cooke was asking for. A change. It's said that the meek shall inherit the earth. We ask when. When will the landlords give the meek a free lease? Mr. Ebenrod is humbly asking for the state of Mississippi. Five uh, O'Shea shows. Uh, Nick, you know, uh, selling drugs to, you know, black people and then making some excuse about it, saying like, you know, I'm a product of my environment. I didn't have any other choice. When you know, you know, there's plenty of other choices than, than selling drugs and breaking the law. And we're talking about breaking the law. We're not talking from the moral standpoint. We're talking about lawful. Okay. So again, um, laws have consequences. Morals are just you know subjective. But when you have laws and things on paper that say if you do this, we're going to punish you by incarcerating you, and you break them, and you're dumb enough to get caught, then you're just dumb. All right, all right. Shout out to Reality's Temple in the building. Well, just from us, I got to get him on here, man. You talk about somebody polarizing. Whoa. <laughs> that brother, that brother is, uh, <laughs> I'll leave that alone. Shout out to the brother, though, Just. And that is uh, Brother Talik from the Reality Temples on Earth channel. And if you get a chance uh, to subscribe, please do, please do subscribe to his channel. He's a, he's a good brother. You know, he's trying to, He's doing good work and he wants to do good constructive things. He has good information to provide. So please do check out his channel if you get a chance. Hey, my brother, you know I had to call you and thank you personally again. I cannot describe to you how happy I was to meet you in person, by the way. That was just like amazing. We're talking about not falling into the teacher trap not falling into the website trap. So today, what teachers can you learn from? We just told you that the Aka Wu tells you that we're all a great teacher at the same time. So who are you gonna learn from? You're gonna learn from brothers like Sarnetta. You're gonna learn the positives and negatives from brothers like Sarnetta. You're gonna learn the positives and negatives of people like Brother Polite. The positives and negatives of people like Sarah Sutton Seti. You're going to learn from Maurice Muhammad, Talik Ibn Rod. You're going to learn from Netter Cat. You're going to learn. you definitely going to learn from King Noble. you definitely going to learn a little something something from Brother Daku. We want to make sure that we're not just working to be first, but we're working to be right. A lot of times there are situations when things are just happening so fast. You've got breaking news happening. You've got storms moving in when there's a breaking news situation. We get our crew to the scene. They're on the ground. They're asking the questions, gathering the information. And in the final seconds before you see us, we're getting that confirmation. It's always important to be fast, but we always want to be right. You know, these aren't jokes, these are thoughts, these are things that make you say. The following program is rated TVMA. Viewer discretion is advised. GL Fuck Site Perspectives. Let's talk about Christianity and black people. You know, 
you're going to believe what you want to believe. You're going to do what you want to do. And I'm going to believe what I want to believe. And I'm going to do what I want to do. So, Christianity and black people. Ain't it odd how during slavery, black people were not allowed to read. In fact, if they got caught reading, they could be murdered, killed, hung from trees, beaten, tethered. Okay? Slaughtered, literally, for reading. But they made sure that black people slaves, right? African slaves, people of color, black people that were enslaved in America. They made sure to give y'all the Bible. You can't read, but you can read the Bible. We'll allow you to read the Bible. You have to ask yourself, why is it that they were okay with you reading the Bible, but they weren't okay with you understanding other things and having an education and being free to begin with? Uh, but you can read the Bible. So that pretty much sets sets the tone for, for Christianity and black folks. You know, if you can't see that religion is used as social control and it's used as a control mechanism to keep people in check because it has little, in my opinion, this is my opinion, my perspective, uh, it has little to nothing to do with actually loving and caring and supporting because the very same people who set up and gave you the Bible are also the same people who enslaved you, who raped and murdered and killed and slaughtered and stole you and destroyed your countries and your families and your communities. But in the meantime, Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Y'all delusional as hell. Fast forward to 2019 and you got the Botham Gene or Botham Gene and the Amber Geiger case where a cop breaks into another person's home, into a man's home. He's minding his business eating ice cream and he is shot and killed in his home because a white cop, a white woman, a white female cop decided, this is my apartment. Fuck you. Bop, bop, bop. And here we are and this white cop, this white woman cop this white female gets a slap on the wrist. Ten years for murdering an unarmed man, black man, in his home. Up for parole in five years. But it gets weirder. Because another thing, yeah, we can talk about Botham's brother, which I'm going to talk about his brother. But are we going to forget the black woman judge who also went and hugged this murderer like a judge first of all you're a judge you're supposed to be non-biased what are you doing hugging a person that you just sentenced for murdering somebody you're giving her a hug and you're giving her a pep talk you know she's sitting up hugging her like that's her damn daughter and then you got botham's brother brant gene the way he hugged Amber, you would have thought they had a secret love affair. I mean, damn. Are we paying attention to the body language between these people? He's sitting up here, got his whole arm. I mean, a strong embrace for somebody that killed your fucking brother. But I forgive you, and I don't want you to go to jail. I forgive you. Let me give you a hug. Let me hug you probably more than I hugged my own brother when he was alive. And then we got the black woman judge. She's sitting up hugging on the bitch and giving her pep talk. And then, hold up, it gets worse. Then you got the um, police officer that's in the, in, the, in the court. She's a black woman too. She's sitting up rubbing Amber's hair, holding her down. I'm like, but this is what Christianity does. <laughs> this is what it does. You know, it, keep them sweet and docile keep them forgiving people that don't deserve forgiveness you know keep you overlooking and turning the other cheek and this too shall pass and all this cliche bullshit um in the meantime you are steadily being denied basic human rights your families and communities are being murdered slaughtered abused left and right been going on for centuries 400 plus years of brutality 
But y'all still sitting up, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We gonna pray it away. God gonna see us through. We, we gonna get the Plymouth Rock. Y'all are delusional as hell. Another thing, you know I'm going there. Oh, and I'm wearing pink for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, October. It's also Domestic Violence Awareness Month. It's also LGBTQ History Month. Um, it's also my birthday month, Libra season. Um, it's a lot going on this month. Uh, rest in peace to my papa as well. His birthday is October 4th. Um, but anyways... It's strange to me how we are so forgiving of others. But y'all, and like, you know I'm about to go there. Y'all sit up here and hug the person that killed your mother. Get this. Make it make sense. Y'all will sit up, kill black trans women left and right. Bully, harass, discriminate against black LGBTQ plus people. You know, not take care of your children, abuse your children. Not take care of your women, abuse your women. Not take care of your men, shoot and kill each other left and right. But then we'll turn around and let George Zimmerman be free. This George Zimmerman been walking around free for seven and a half years, going on eight years. You're sitting up hugging the person that killed your brother. But then you'll turn around and kill a, a black trans woman. You'll turn around and ridicule and bully a person that's LGBTQ+. You don't have forgiveness for the LGBTQ plus people in your community, but you have forgiveness for somebody that killed your brother. And like I said, George Zimmerman's still walking. So, y'all, once again, black people, y'all are delusional as fuck. And that's really, and then y'all, and then when it comes to religion, y'all cherry pick shit. You know, y'all can understand that, oh, homosexuality's a sin. But then you can't see how cheating on your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, your partner, your spouse is also a sin. You can't see eating fucking sell shellfish is a sin. You can't see you shouldn't be eating fucking pork and swine. You can't see y'all fucking y'all cherry pick. Y'all cherry pick everything. I thought you were supposed to be waiting to marriage too to have sex, but you're doing that too, right? Like I said, I and I'm gonna say this as well. All skin folk ain't kinfolk okay just because we share a similar hue and color don't mean that you my kinfolk so that's why you know if, if, if when shit gets real and shit is already getting real it's been real but okay we'll let it hit the fan for real when shit hits the fan for real i'm not finna be worried about trying to save all black people i'm not finna be worried about trying to save all white people i'm not finna be worried about saving all people period I'm going to fuck with the people that's been fucking with me. And a lot of y'all, Harriet Tubman would have shot your ass with the shotgun and it would have been deserved. Because you motherfuckers have issues. Well, you lie. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, everyone. Uh, this is your soul brother, uh, Talib. Uh, and, uh, of course, I'm on here as a guest with uh, our brother, uh, Angel Snub Snub Seven of Reality Temple Ministries. And um, it's, it's, it's something that I really want to say. In this topic, uh, dealing with this uh, cop, I forget her whole name, but I know she go by the last name of Amber. It's a Caucasian cop that was convicted of uh, killing uh, a brother down in uh, Dallas, Texas. And uh, about a couple of days ago, given uh, a 10 year sentence. Well, uh, I want to just say this here. You know, for those of you, I know those, uh, some of you that's in the uh, dark skin descended uh, of 
of a slave born in America community feel that some type of justice has been administered out of all of the injustices that has taken place, especially over these past few years with the racist cops gunning down the black people in the streets of America. But I would like to say that, you know, no disrespect to the victim and no disrespect to his family. But I must say, I am appalled by the way his family members have this whole situation through the court proceedings. As far as doing the verdict process when the cop was found guilty and also doing the uh, sentencing uh, procedural process of the trial. And out of all my years in and out of the criminal justice system, of course, as an, as an ex-offender, and knowing what the criminal justice system is like here in America, especially geared to those of us, especially that are dark-skinned descendants of slaves born here in America, I've never, ever imagined seeing a judge kissing the offender that was found guilty of any crime before they court, uh, let alone sentenced to do time before they court. And this is the first time I've ever seen something like that. Then they allow the victims or uh, family members to uh, walk over and hug the murderer of their loved one. I've just never seen nothing like this in the annals of history of the so-called criminal justice system here in America during my time at least. And, and, I, and I just must say that, uh, you know, this is definitely a charade. This is actually a joke, you know, because this now gives uh, Caucasians, uh, you know, in this country, more uh, reason to feel like we as dark-skinned descendants of slaves mainly born here in America is a joke, you know? And with that said, of course the victim, you know, uh, may he rest in peace, uh, you know, was not from America. He was from a Caribbean nation known as St. Lucia. Well, it's his family who was also from uh, St. Lucia, Virgin Islands. And uh, they are a part of this uh, black immigrant, immigrant population that's been robbed. What happened? Well, we're having technical difficulty. Okay, it looks like we're having technical difficulties here. What happened? Hey. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Just went silent. I don't know. Anyway, you back on. Okay. Yes. Uh, but, but anyway, before we were uh, just uh, interrupted uh, for whatever reason, uh, technologically, um, like I was saying, uh, you know, these black immigrants are here to replace us 
because this would give the Caucasian the option not to have to worry about giving us reparations for enslaving our ancestors. That's one thing that it is mainly about. That's why these black immigrants are here to replace us. This is why you find us as dark skinned descendants of slaves born in America being massively incarcerated or being, uh, you know, destroyed by crack cocaine and other drugs that's been flooded into our community over the years. Uh, like heroin and stuff, you know, as well. And, and uh, I mean, this is why black families are more divided and torn up as well as our communities throughout America. You know what I'm saying? Because of this situation. So with us having these black immigrants here in place, uh, definitely makes the situation a lot more worse for us. You know, and, and, and uh, they don't come here out of concern for us. Because if they was concerned for us, while our parents was over here getting dogs and water holes uh, sick on them in the South during the Civil Rights Movement. They was in Jamaica, St. Lucia, the Barbados, Nigeria, Ghana, uh, you know, in the Ivory Coast, uh, you know, barely fighting their European uh, colony oppressors for independence, okay? And not one of them countries, including St. Lucia, ever offered us any refuge to leave America so we wouldn't have to keep dealing with this Caucasian here in America for us, us being oppressed here as dark skinned descendants of slaves born in America. Okay. And another thing, Nelson Mandela fell on his promise to open up major doors for uh, black Americans from the United States after he got out of prison and became president of South Africa, when majority of the bulk of his support toward his freedom came from black America. So we can't forget that either, you know? And I was speaking on this under the comment section of another video that I saw, you know, speaking about this issue about this cop, whether she should have got more time. And of course, yes, yeah, she should have got more time. She should have got life. Plenties and admitted races. And that fact alone, you understand, should also, uh, you know, gave her a, a hate charge for the crime that she committed. You know, but, but at the same time, you know, these people, you know what I'm saying, giving her a pass and, and, and hugging her and all this other stuff, including the judge and I hear the bailiff as well. In a court, you know, uh, consoling her and hugging her and all this, when she is a murderer and a convicted one at that, you know, and then they turn around and, and, and give her this free pass. Well, did the judge hug up on O.J. Simpson like that, even though he was found not guilty of killing Nicole Brown Simpson and her boyfriend Ronald Goldman? I mean, come on. We need to really think about this. You know, she was found guilty for this uh, guy's murder. You know, and, and, and that's crazy. That just showed you what the criminal justice system in this country think about us as dark skinned descendants of slaves born here in America. And this is why, if we're not going to effectively do nothing about it, and I ain't talking about marching or or uh, some damn mere protesting going on in the streets and all that and hollering and pouting, complaining and ain't nothing getting done. I'm talking about doing something in a more effective manner to kick them in the ass, to get them up off us for real. We need to just get up out this country. And it's just that simple because they seriously take us more for a joke than ever. You know, and I'm not saying for us to leave this country and go to any of the mother black countries either like St. Lucia, 
Because if two people think like that, imagine how they treat each other in them countries. And they look like each other when they so quick to forget a Caucasian. I used to want to go to the Caribbean to live. Places like Jamaica, the Bahamas. I used to want to go over to Africa to live. But now, what I've seen over these years with these black immigrants and black foreigners, you know, throughout the world, and 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 and, 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 and up to this point, and even with this event that's taking place on this situation that we're speaking about in this video, you know, uh, I would never want to move to a, a black governed country, you know. I'm not going to use the uh, terminology that Trump used for them type of countries, but I wouldn't want to go to one of them, you know, because I know that if they feel that much forgivable toward their oppressor, what do they think about someone that look like them, let alone someone like us that's coming from America? You see what I'm saying? So, you know, I I, um, I just don't, you know, that made me more not even want to trust them. Well, as we, well, as we as dark-skinned descendants of slaves born in America can't even trust each other, I definitely wouldn't want to trust no black uh, born immigrant. You know, they come over here to America, you know, and, and, and be swearing up and down how so proud of the country they is that they come from. So how come they bring they happy ass here to America? You know? Why they can't iron out their problems and difference where they come from instead of jumping ship and coming to America to benefit off on our uh, civil rights struggle? That was initially meant for us and to protect us, to give us some type of protection and justice as a people who's been here for hundreds of years longer than they have in this country. When they got their own countries and governments, but they want to jump ship and come to America, you know? Here it is. We as dark skin descendants of slaves born in America don't even have a state behind us, mm -hmm. let alone a country. These people got countries behind them, but they run to America. And, and, and I don't want to hear that, oh, they poor over there and they have lack of resource. Well, they need to create resources. They need to, they, especially over there in the continent, where they supposed to have all these natural rich resources that these Europeans and Asians is making billions off of, raping them for and making billions off of, you know, but they want to run over here to America, talking about how so proud they is to be Nigerian, Kenyan, Sudanese, Rwandan, South African, Ethiopian, you know, and the list go on, but you bring your happy butt over here to America. You stay over there and keep them Europeans and Asians up out your country and maybe you can live rich over there. Instead of killing each other over diamonds and stuff like you do over in the Congo, where you can live and have a more better existence over there instead of running over here. But apparently, because y'all history dictate that y'all were never, never able to unite in Africa, even before or prior to uh, colonialization in Africa, and, and prior to slavery, you know, even in the Caribbean. You know, you understand, you know, y'all obviously ain't trying to really unite. Y'all can't even unite in the Caribbean. And that's a known fact historically and presently. But y'all want to run and jump ship and come to America and benefit off of black American struggle. And then had a that's even you call us lazy. 
when we work, we fought hard and bled hard so you can even be able to get in this country. You know? So like I said before, just like someone said in the comment section on the video concerning this subject, when something else happened to a black foreigner or a black foreign family, black Americans, black Americans need not to be concerned, nor to even concern ourselves with that. Because them people signed their death warrant. They signed their death warrant to come to this country. Just coming to this country, they signed their death warrant. Many of them know what it is to be black in America from what they heard from our far shore. They know what it is to be black from America because they got a lot of them even had family over here before they came over here that told them what it was like in America to be dark skinned and they still carry their butt over here. So they know what it is about being dark skinned in America. Some of them who didn't know but it's quite a bit of them who do know what it is. So we not gonna, I'm not going to sit up and make no excuses for them. They come over here, you know, like I said, they get Medicaid, Social Security, food stamps, Medicaid, and all that. When we as dark skinned descendants of slaves born here in America couldn't go to the countries that they come from and get the same thing. You know, so... I mean, hey, you know, when they come over here, they need to expect that stuff like what happened to that uh that guy, uh, what's, I forget his name, uh, Brown, I believe. But what happened to him, what happened to people like that West African immigrant, or my dude Diallo, back in 1999 in New York, when the uh, cops shot him up with 41 bullets, with 19 killing him for no reason and didn't uh, get found guilty, no doing any time for it. You know, they need to understand that that's a part of the package when they huh. come here to America. They really need to realize that that's going to be a part of the package once they step their foot upon these shores of America as dark skinned people, just like them people from Mexico and Central America, brown people coming over here, crossing the border into the United States, realizing what it is to be dark-skinned in America. You see? So, they need to understand and realize that that is a part of the package when they come to America. You know? Everything that dark-skinned descendants of slaves uh, born here in America been telling the world for over these years or what it is to be dark skinned in America, but yet they still refuse and ignore the, the heeding to the car and bring their butt over here to America, then they they supposed to get what they get. And I am very unapologetic about that. As far as saying that, you know, they supposed to get what they get. And it's just that simple. You know, they come over here, they look down on us. It's dark skinned descendants of slaves born in America. Call us lazy. Feed into that, uh, you know, Caucasian white man narrative about us. It's so called African Americans. You know, they feed right off into that negative narrative, negative narrative about us as so called African Americans when they've been fitting off our struggle. You know, with people benefiting off of what people like Martin Luther King Jr. and Mega Evers died for. You know, and while we was over here fighting to help Nelson Mandela to get his freedom in South Africa, you know what I'm saying? We should have been over here freeing up uh, black political prisoners. And a lot of them that's still in prisons from way back in the 60s and 70s. Because they want to see us have some type of justice for once and all as a people in this country. And they done been totally forgotten about. You know? But we over here fighting for somebody like Nelson Mandela that was 3,000 miles away. That we been trying to claim our happy ass before he went and did 27 years in prison in South Africa. 
you know? So like I said before, uh, you know, at the end at, at, at the end of the day, you know, uh, we need to wake up and understand and realize what we are up against is God scared the sins of slaves. We got to expect this and more of this to come. You know? And now that these people have really shown forgiveness to these people, you know, for what they did to their loved ones, like I said before earlier, this gives the Caucasian more ammunition to feel emboldened that they ain't got to take us serious as people anytime they commit some type of criminal injustice against us, especially out of hate. You know? So like I said before, they need to understand and realize that they have actually made this situation more harder for those of us that are dark-skinned descendants of slaves born in America. When all they got to do is take their butts back to the countries they come from. Once they realize, you know, the heat getting warmer and what it really is to be dark-skinned here in America. You know, so like I said before, they need to understand that. You know, and how many times, you know, you, you want, and then you get them Negroes, also like the ones I seen in the comment section on the one video I was watching pertaining to this subject about that police getting sentenced to 10 years. Uh, you know, I'm going to say this, you know, them Negroes, like this one Negro, I wanted to uh, text him to reply back to his comment, but uh, it was hard for me to uh, find his comment. Maybe I'll run across it again. I don't know, but this guy looked like he was uh, texting the comic straight from Detroit. And I am originally from Detroit, Michigan. And I want to tell this idiot, ask them blacks to forgive each other mm. in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Behind the way they killing each other there. Ask them, why don't they learn how to forgive each other before they keep keep continuously killing each other like they do there. You know? And, and this is the thing. You know, I, I, I really, you know what I'm saying? Like Willie D said in the one video, you know, if we're so forgiving toward Caucasians for all the wrong they've done us, why don't we be forgiven toward each other? But we ain't going to be forgiven toward each other. Mm -hmm. What we going to do is say, no, nah, they deserve to get what they got coming. Get them. That's the first thing a dark-skinned descendant, gonna, a dark -skinned descendant of a slave going to say about another dark-skinned descendant of a slave born in America. It's getting, killing, do whatever you got to do, but getting. <laughs> you know? And it's a daggone shame then we turn around and want to forgive these racist bastards the way we do. And that just makes us look like a joke in the eyes of the rest of the world. Why you think no other country is stepping in to defend us? At least back in the 60s, when our, when our uh, grandparents was, uh, you know, in the civil rights trying to fight for us to get some type of justice in this country, the UN stepped in. And that's what made uh, President John F. Kennedy, uh, you know, resort to working on civil rights legislation before the bill was passed by Lyndon B. Johnson. Uh, who it became the next president after Kennedy was uh, assassinated. Since he couldn't finish it off, Johnson was able to finish it off by signing the Civil Rights Voting Act and the uh, 
other civil rights act bill that he signed, I believe, right after that. But, uh, you know, that was because the UN got involved. But the UN and the rest of the world is not getting involved in our uh, plight as God's getting the citizens of slaves born in America because we are not taking our plight serious. I'm going to repeat it again. It's because we're not taking our plight serious. We talk about what Malcolm X was about to do as far as presenting our case before the UN. What are we going to do in this generation? It's been over 14 years, I mean, 50 years since Malcolm X been dead. What are we going to do for our plight? You know? as a people in this generation. Apparently so far, not the damn thing. That's why we gonna probably end up in a mass grave sooner or later. So, you know, like I said before, uh, you know, once I, once I rise up out the ashes and get myself in place where the circumstances will permit me to be able to get the hell out of America, I'm not going, like I said, to no countries like where, them, where the victim's family is from. Because if they think that way, I could imagine them thinking that way in their own countries. And I don't want to be around no other dark-skinned people that think that way. Because forgiving our enemies for the wrong that they've done to us is a very dangerous way of thinking. Not only to ourselves, but to each other. You know, and with that said, um, I'm gonna let the brother, uh, if he want to, brother, ain't snub snub seven chime in to give his input on this whole situation thing, you know. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> well, um, <clears throat> really, I wasn't prepared to talk about this, this situation at all when you, when you gave me a call. <clears throat> busy taking care of personal uh, things here and uh i'm very happy that you did step up to the plate brother to live and uh from this platform bring some of what uh we believe or what we think our our opinion to this uh to this uh drama that we are experiencing right now um you said all that, brother, and I, I was shocked that you just missed the fact. One of the primary uh, factors in this whole case is that Christianity is involved. Oh, yes, I forgot. Uh, oh, and, and thanks for reminding me about <laughs> that, brother. I forgot, yes, because the, the victim family happens to be a uh, Christian mm -hmm. converts. Yeah. And so, yes, they, they definitely express that religious uh, Christianity side of them in terms of the manner and the way that they forgave their loved ones a uh, convicted murderer. And yes, I really, uh, uh, I apologize. Forgive me, brother, for not mentioning that factor. But yes, that's a factor that's definitely destroying our people. It's that Christianity and that religious uh, way of, uh, you know, flawed thinking, period. That got our people, you know, so much wanting to forgive our enemies for doing what they've done to us. Go ahead, brother. Continue. Yeah. Um, first of all, that young man, 28 years old, he's the picture of, of a human being that seen him have a great heart. He's doing positive things in his life. He's He's just doing everything that we think that somebody should want to do. And here you are in your home. Uh, they report that this young man was eating ice cream and joined a television show when all this happened. So to my Christian brothers and sisters out there in YouTube land and around the world, wh whoever may be listening to this broadcast, I want to ask you, where was God in all this? 
Why would God allow out of, out of all the wicked, nasty, vile, profane, warmongering, pedophile, all these riffraff that's out here in the world, why would your God allow and permit one of his best? Because clearly this young man was one of the best. Because I can guarantee you, if they could have found drugs in his system, could have found something that he'd done they think could make him look bad, they would have done it. This young man was so clean, they couldn't even begin to find nothing on him. So here's somebody like that. Where was your God at? I'm in my house. I believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. And the devil comes to my door and blows my brains out. Where was your God at? That's, that's a question I want to, 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 to ask you. Sister Noble and I, we was talking about this and before the sentencing phase and Sister Noble said that they probably get give, they're going to convict her, but probably give her six years. And the reality of it is she did get 10 years. With five years, she's eligible for probation, parole, in five years the reality is you can work out a deal when somebody exhibits good behavior and she could it's a possibility she could get out in three also you have to take in consideration any time that you spend in jail that's a factor in in your in your time also so she's already done a certain amount of time just the fact that she's been locked up so that so this woman could actually murder somebody and be she could be out on the street in less than three years. This, this case will die down. You're going to stop talking about it like you normally do. And they'll let that woman go and you'll never know it. You'll never know in less than two and a half years. But even if you did know, what you going to do about it? What you going to do about it? And see, that's my thing when you're looking at all like this. And going back to what you said, Brother Talib, about um, about um, being in the in the in the judicial system the way we both have been. Mm -hmm. I've never, out of all the times I ever been to court, all the things I've seen, not only criminal court but civil court. Now you. You might expect more compassion in civil court because it has nothing to do with a criminal, you know, criminal activity. I've never seen none of these judges want to hug folks and these bailiffs want to hug and show emotion. But now, to my knowledge, now you could you tell me when I've been to court, those bailiffs are supposed to be armed. Yeah, they they They're supposed to be armed. I know when I watch Judge Judy. And Judge Mathis, those bailiffs are supposed to be armed. Their primary job is to protect that judge. So here you are. You are in this case. You have a a a bailiff. She got to be armed. I couldn't really tell. She got to be armed. This dingbat could have took her pistol and just got the blast in the courtroom. But the 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 courtroom is so full of love and joy. I guess ain't nobody nobody thinking about security, right? And this woman is so special. The judge got to get off the bench. The family, the young man got to can I can 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 I your honor give 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 the murder of my brother a hug. I was on a uh, a post on Facebook with brother Gary and one of his people was talking about the the brother was repping his his uh his brother that that was murdered. His brother would, would have wanted to to embrace, you know, embrace that uh that woman. I said, no, he cannot represent his brother. His brother is dead. You cannot represent a dead person unless you are a lawyer or something over there, a state or something like that. You cannot represent his, his brother. Have no, I can guarantee you his brother would rather have been alive. But because of this Christianity. Love your enemies, turn the other cheek, and all this kind of stuff. 
I have no, I have sympathy, empathy, and I want to send my condolences, but at the same time, you, if the family want to forgive the murder, what do it look like for us to be all upset over this situation? I'm not upset over it. I'm not going to protest over it. I'm not going to suggest nobody protest over it and talk about it. If the mother, if the brother, if the family themselves want to forgive and forget. Wait a minute. For, 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 my, for my understanding, the mother includes other female relatives or the victim's family have been completely silent on this issue. I, I saw the mother. The mother. The mother. Yes, the mother has spoke, but the rest of the females in the family have been quite completely silent. Yeah, I haven't heard nothing. Issue. Yeah. Yeah. But the mother, this is what the mother said. The mother said she's not quite ready to forgive. And she's proud of her son that reached out and gave that love to that murderer. But she's not ready to do it yet. And it's all because of this religious influence. Let me tell you something. See, they, this is unnatural behavior. There's no animal that you can find on this planet. If you hurt one of their relatives, you hurt their kind, if they can, they are not going to love you. They're going to take you out. They're going to take you out. That's unnatural, abnormal behavior. You're not doing nothing remarkable. That's the sign that somebody have made you sick. Somebody have made you voluntarily, you are suffering from a mental disorder. It's not natural. You can go to your, you can, you can go to any animal, even a domesticated animal, and try to hurt their puppy or try to hurt something close to them and watch how they react. Now, because of fear, they might back off, but they hate your guts. They don't, they're not going to come and want to love you. That's not going to happen. So we have a sick case here. And also the people that are upset and protesting and want to march or whatever, you just as sick because the people that their actual biological relative was murdered outright and this dingbat was trying her best to get out of it she was trying to get out of it she wasn't trying to look for, for forgiveness she didn't sit around and talk about well i made this mistake and i'm just gonna have to suffer the consequences of my actions and what no she doing everything and her people trying to do everything she can to squirm out of it a not guilty plea. They wish they could have filed something nasty they could have talked about about this young man. They just couldn't find nothing. Now, for me, if it was me, the first thing they would have said, well, you know he suffered uh, mental illness and, and all this whole crazy stuff. You know, that's the first thing. They're going to go look at my record. Well, he was in a crazy house. He was suffering mental disorder. They couldn't find nothing on this young man. Nothing. So, also, another strange thing in this case is, and it's just a rumor, was it a possibility that there was something going on romantically between this man and this dingbat that we don't know nothing about? Why was she just, un well, they, they crazy, these, you know, folks, we know what they're about, you know, so they don't have to have no real reason. But if you combine that with some type of romantic love affair thing going on, whatever, it makes things much worse. And she's a cop. So the cop, so the judge, as you know, the, the, the judge is loved by the police department. And she's in favor of the police department. And of course, this dingbat is a police officer. And we know all, and we see all the results. But the bottom line, brothers and sisters, is this. Like I say, cases like this and things that's going on in the news or whatever, I really don't even talk about. Y'all like to talk about this stuff. I don't like to talk about it. It means nothing to me. 
Because the bottom line is, like they told me when I was locked up, what you gonna do about it? <laughs> See, what you gonna do about it? Just like I said, if you ain't gonna do nothing about it, shut the hell up and pack up and leave. You you have only two choices in this situation. You kick these people in the ass and make it the way that you want it, or you need to leave like any person would do in an abusive relationship. Now, when this first, when the, when the uh, murder, the actual murder verdict first came down, they was happy as a lark. Woo, murder, justice for Trayvon Martin. Justice for Michael Brown, justice for Brady. Oh, they just was happy. Then they heard that 10 years and all the smiles went away. I knew it was coming. I said, I bet this, I bet this ding back. And like I told you, Sister Nova said six. Six years. I knew they was gonna wipe the smile off the faces. So here we are in another situation. And it's like all the situations that we've been experiencing since I was a little boy. These things happen. We protest, we get angry for a few seconds and go sit our ass down, get a beer, get some weed, get some opioids, get some booty, whatever, whatever, the, anything, go right back to what you was doing. Nothing's gonna change. That's all thing we do. This stuff goes on and on and on and on and on. So what you gonna do about it? They could have set her free, so what? And for me, I don't give a damn because you're not gonna do about it, so what? This is their country. This is how things roll, this is how things do. You don't wanna do what is correct in order to change this condition, to, to, to change your situation. You want to sit around here, and that's why it's good to be a Christian, because Christianity and all these religions you have in your mind. Oh, hey God, God gonna do this, and one day, let, let me grab your arm, brother Talib. Come on, let's let's do it. Hey, hey, let me grab your arm. We shall over. Come on, brother Talib. We shall. Man, this ain't funny. Come on now, let me grab your arm. Overcome. <laughs> oh, I know. That's too sissified, I guess. You know, Black Power family, that's better for y'all, right? RBG Nation family, I'm black first. That, that sounds better. Same result. The same result. Ain't no... There's no difference. The same result that you get from we shall overcome is the same result you're going to get. Black power. <laughs> Esau the devil. He, Yahweh going to come and kill the white man. Same stuff. Same. So I don't know. These people be, they'll, they'll laugh at we shall overcome. And they're doing the same damn thing just in a different way. Make them feel better. Make them feel more tough. Right, 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 right. <laughs> That's all. Make them sound more tough. <laughs> Make them sound more tough. <laughs> That's all. But I'm going to tell you the reality of it. And I'm going to keep it real with y'all. It's our leadership, and it's a lot of our people that's in the forefront, these sissies that's holding you back from tearing these, uh, ho uh, tearing these people up once and for all. It's them. When I was in the Nation of Islam, them brothers was ready to take care of business for real. They was ready. They was ready to die, whatever it took. A lot of our brothers are ready and sisters. They sick of it. But you got your leadership and you got those in the forefront. Uh, as you, <laughs> you know, all they want to do is make YouTube videos and talk and run their damn mouth. Our people are ready. They don't care anymore. You gonna treat me right? 
or nobody in this damn place gonna be treated right. You gonna give me justice or nobody gonna have justice. They are ready. And since they got all this energy because they ready to deal with the enemy once and for all, since they since they can't use that, that energy, that fire, they turn on themselves. That's what you're seeing. They're killing each other. Because the because your leadership, these wackos, your so-called, all these people that you following, from young Farrell to Seti, Farrakhan, all these, they got you all docile. Malcolm X said this, you got to get angry and stay angry. And I will testify, and through my own personal experience, that Malcolm X was right. When I was locked up, I had to stay angry because if I did not stay angry, I probably wouldn't be talking to you right now because you can get comfortable and that's your problem. You are comfortable in all this. You get pissed off for a few minutes and then you'll take your family to Disneyland to go see Mickey Mouse. You'll get pissed off for a few minutes and go down to the, to the bar and get your drink on. You get pissed off for a few minutes and you look up, you start looking up some girl's skirt. Damn, she got a big booty. When you're thinking about your freedom, when you're thinking about getting, look, let me tell y'all something. When I was thinking about, and I, and the only thing on my, on my mind was getting free, your booty, your tits, your money, your basketball game, that don't mean nothing to me. I'll get that when I get free. Number one priority, I got to get the hell out of here. That's number one priority. Because all this other stuff don't mean a damn thing when I'm locked up. Don't mean nothing. And that's your problem. You enjoy your little house and your degree on the wall and your genetically modified plants and animal food that you get. And your reality shows and your fake ass black power garbage and your no power church. You are you satisfied in your condition and that's your problem. But if you really was angry and you stayed angry, you could get out of this situation quicker than you think because you because you you think i mean it looks tough it's not as tough as you think you haven't tried it don't you know that once i tried to 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 get out of my situation it was easier than i thought well my number one problem is i didn't have the right knowledge i'm gonna say that again my number one problem why I could not get free? Because I did not have the right knowledge. I knew about Kemi. I knew about the Black Panther Party. I knew about all that blacky black stuff. I knew about eating one meal a day and all like that. That's good knowledge. Nice knowledge to have. But when I got the right knowledge, which was to understand psychiatry and what that crap was about, understand the criminal justice system, when I began to understand, got that kind of knowledge, I got free. Because you have to have the right knowledge, the appropriate knowledge for the situation that you're in. The reason why we continue to stay and suffer in the situation that we're in, because we we're not using the right knowledge. And this is not to say that the knowledge, the scholarship, the information, and all that that you have is good. But clearly, it's not helping your situation. And you don't have the right mindset. You are comfortable in this. So you'll get angry like a child. You know how you, when you was a child, you get angry at your parents because they you want something or you want to do something, they tell you no. And you stumped your feet and poke your little lip out. But then they said, come on, everybody. Let's get in the car, go get some ice cream. All that, all of a sudden, all that madness go out the window and you jump in your happy ass in the car to go get that ice cream. 
And that's how we act as Negroes in this country, like little children. They gave you a little ice cream. They gave you that murder verdict. Then they turned right back around and gave you that laughable sentence. Now you back upset again with your mouth all poked out. Sending you through all these emotional changes. And like I told you, the bottom line is, the reason why I don't talk about stuff like this is because what you going to do? Not a damn thing except make videos some of you who are still lucky to have your channel monetized you won't talk about it so you can make money off of it that's all you're gonna do and then you wait for the next something to happen that's all you're gonna do you don't take nothing serious you think everything is a game everything is funny and uh that's why i don't talk about things like this because from this platform, we concentrate on, we need to get this off our back once and for all. You sick of it. You should be sick of it. This goes on. It, it reminds me of a dog chasing their tail. Just go round and round chasing their tail. When you gonna get sick of it? This is not the first time. Most of, most of these uh, uh, in, in most of these incidents, the cop gets off free, so at least she getting at least two years, maybe two and a half years. But most times they get off for free. Like so, what? They don't have no respect for you, and the reason why they do that because they don't have no respect for you. They know that we are a joke. If they thought that a uh, 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 easy sentence would bring a harsh consequences to them, believe me. It'll be a different ball again. But with you, they say, ah, look at them. They hugging the woman, kissing on the woman, give her a Bible. Oh, that's cute. That's remarkable. Sick as hell. Uh, brother, uh, I, I really need to go so I could close this out. All quick. right. Uh, I just want to add uh, on to what you just heard right there from our brother Angel Snub Snub Seven, uh, and thank you, brother, uh, for giving that input. Yeah, um, you know, um, like I said, it's it's uh, it's very uh, you know, disgusting. It's a travesty, you know, and. Um, this has made us look more to be the jokes that we are to these uh, races. And they're going to continue on, you know, doing what they do, you know. And as uh, long as we keep pouting and shot, shouting mm -hmm. and crying like big babies, <laughs> huh. you know, we're going to keep getting it the same thing. I mean, you know, so... Uh, uh, accept your uh, fate for what it is. Since you ain't gonna do nothing about it for once and for all, or uh, or get out the kitchen. It's just that simple, you know. And and uh, I ain't really got no more to say about it. Uh, <laughs> matter of fact, I'm gonna say like Willie D say, no more talk. And with that, uh, brother. Uh, you know, uh, I got to, I definitely got to make a move. Yeah. Because uh, I got important things to take care of today myself. And, uh, you know, until next time, um, you know, I just hope you people marinate on what we said in this video. And, uh, you know, and start at least taking, if you don't take nothing else seriously, take yourself seriously. Right. And, and uh, with that said, uh, I'm going to uh, let this brother close out because this is his platform and I'm going to respect this platform in that manner. So I'm going to let him close it out. And brother, uh, I'm about to leave out. So uh, I'll talk with you later. All right. And, uh, you know, and enjoy the rest of your day. And to, and to you and everybody else out there, love, peace, and soul. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right.
And with that said, I'm going to be out of here myself. I want to uh, thank everybody for this uh, spur of the moment uh, live. Brother Talib wanted to say something on this subject. I did a few days ago, but then I changed my mind. But uh, it's just uh, we're going to have to make up our minds what we want to do. Are we going to take things seriously or are we going to keep looking at things for a joke? You know, looking at yourself as entertainment. There's nothing entertaining about none of this. I also don't like wasting my time. I don't like wasting resources. So um, what are we going to do about it? We are in a situation that we've been dealing with going on 500 years. 500 years, like, damn, do you know how many people who have lived and died in 500 years? And we keep, and we're, we're passing this on to your children when it don't have to. We can put this to an end. We can stop this. Like Patrick Henry said during the Revolutionary War, during that period of time, he said, look, give me liberty or give me death. I'm going, I'd rather be, I'd rather be dead than continue to live under British occupation. If you want to be slaves, just admit it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. If you just want to be a slave and you just want to live in a slave condition or whatever, and you satisfied with it or whatever, I mean, just admit it. I would rather it's I would rather you do that instead of faking the funk because your actions speak louder than the words. Your actions show clearly that you're comfortable in this mess. And you are perfectly willing to pass this mess to your children. That's why I decided, that's why uh, Sister Noble, that's why many of us, we decided a long time ago not to bring children into this world because I did not want a child to suffer like I have done. I'm not going to bring a child into this mess. So if you do have children, and you claim that you love them, it is more expedient and it's more important that you get up off your ass and do what me needs to be done. Otherwise, you are a liar. When you look at your child and talk about, I love you, you are a lover liar. Because these babies, these children, they can't fight for themselves. They don't know. They're not in a position. They are depending on their parents to fight for them and you're failing because you're scared or because you don't know what to do. You don't know what the hell to do or whatever your problem is. But don't say that because we know what to do. You just don't want to do it. And I could guess why you don't want to do it, but uh, <laughs> I don't have to lie to my children. I don't have none, but you have children out there in YouTube land, and you see how you've been living for the last 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, or whatever. And you actually want to give this to your children and great great grandchildren. Our parents, some of them did the best they could. Some of our parents didn't do a damn thing. Most of my family members didn't do a damn thing. They left it up to Martin Luther King. Malcolm and all those who tried to fight. Can you imagine if the 40 were well, during the 60s, it was 17 to 20 million soul brothers and sisters in this country. Can you imagine what we could get done if all of us participated? Only a few handful or do a little something. But then after they die, after they sacrifice, you don't mind benefiting. See, this is another thing. And I want to say this, and I'm going to be out of here. We talk about how immigrants from the islands and from Africa come over here and they benefit from the uh, civil rights uh, gangs and whatever. 
Most of us, our parents and our people, your people didn't do a damn thing either. You could, you probably couldn't name not one of your relatives that was part of the Montgomery uh, bus boycott or protesting with Dr. King or, or, or walking with Malcolm X or with Marcus Garvey. You can't name nobody in your damn family that did nothing. You living off the blood, sweat, and tears of other people. So don't you think it's your damn time to stand up and do something for a change? So you ain't no damn better than the African or the, uh, or the immigrant from the islands. You doing the same thing, living off somebody else's blood, sweat, and tears. And I got a troll that keeps bothering me talking about, well, I need to, I need to be the example. I'm not gonna do a damn thing for y'all sorry for ass. I'm not gonna do that. You're not gonna live off my blood, sweat, and tears. And then, like uh, I hear some of them other brothers say, the first thing these Negroes wanna do they fought to ride in front of the bus. The first thing these Negroes do is run to the back of the bus. You fought and died and struggled to try to get an education, and these suckers drop out of high school. They drop out of grade school. And I'm gonna die and suffer for, for these people? Are you crazy? I'm not your savior, I'm not divine, I'm not a messiah. Those who wanna do that, more power to you, because these people are a bunch of ingrates, they shoulda, Quite frankly, you should have stayed on the damn slave plantation because the reality is that's where you belong because you did not fight for your freedom. You did not fight for no kind of freedom, justice, or, the, or equality. You don't even deserve the little freedom that you got. You deserve to be right back on the damn slave plantation. And guess what? When you was on the slave plantation, there was no drive-by shootings. You weren't a drug addict. You wouldn't twerking and acting crazy the way that you're doing all this type of stuff, stuff when you was on the slave plantation. Your behavior actually was much, much better. Got a little privilege because you don't really have freedom. Got a little privilege and you went out, out, out your damn mind. And you know damn well, if it wasn't for you two, the majority of these suckers wouldn't have nothing to say. The majority wouldn't have nothing to say because I know when there was no YouTube, most people had nothing to say. The only reason why you can talk because you can hide your scary ass behind a computer. I don't, I hate Angel Snub No. 7, but if this was back 30 some years ago, you would have nothing to say. Scary ass. And now everybody's a know it all. We got social media. Everybody and their mama got an opinion and want to say something. What was all this in the 1960s, 1920s, the 1930s? Now everybody got something to say. Scary ass. So like I told you, I really don't have too much to say on these issues because the bottom line is you ain't going to do nothing. So why talk about it? It's a waste of my time. I will continue to concentrate on those things for those when you finally make up your mind, if it's not too late, dealing with the situation once and for all. I'll tell you quite honestly, Extinction, death is probably the best thing for us because this whole thing is really embarrassing. I'm embarrassed to be a black man because I'm, I'm part of a gender. These black men is, is pathetic, pitiful. I'm part of a people who are cowardly, act like slaves, better off dead. And that's why they don't like coming to this channel because I got to bring, I got to tell you the way it really is. That's just the way it is. Otherwise, make me out a liar. I'll be happy. Make me out a liar. Show me that what I'm talking about is not going to, is not true. I'll be happy for it. You think I love to talk this way about us? But that's just the way it is. When you do better, I will tell you you better. 
I'm not going to give you praise that you did not earn. I do not want praise that I did not earn. I do not want to be a winner when I know I'm a loser. You should want to deal with this situation once and for all. I'm sick of it and you should be sick of it. Talking about it on a YouTube video, running around here with doing the same stuff we've been doing, talking about generation of wealth, open up a business, and all this other crap, protesting, marching, voting, all this stuff that we've been doing for the last 100 years that don't work, you're still trying to make it work. Praise Jesus. Oh, Allah. Haven't done nothing for us. And you can get angry at me if you want to. It's not going to change nothing. The only reason why you're angry at, angry at me is because I remind you that all of it is nothing but feel good rhetoric. And you're living in delusion. You're asleep. And you're angry at me because I'm getting trying to get you to wake up for real. All this black conscious crap is nothing but a joke. Still sleep. Still in your in the bed. Because if you if you was out of the bed, your enemies will know it. And they'll treat you like you out the bed. But it's all a joke. And they laughing at you. I'm pretty sure they're laughing at the Negroes. Because they know damn well they wouldn't do it. You're not going to kill their brother or their father or their mother. And they're going to come and kiss and hug on you. I've never even seen them as Christians do it. Except when years and years go by, they might do it. Towards another white man. Sometimes I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, to, to lie. I've seen a Caucasian family. It was on a TV show. They forgave this black man after years. He murdered uh, their brother. I think think it was a cop or something like that. But you'll never see them do what we've seen in this situation. Yes, you do. I done, some, I done seen some polls, people talk to you. And I know everybody, y'all, you know, your group is cool. But they're like they want to shoot you or something, you know, assassinate you. Hey, that, I'm not allowed to take that. That ain't, that ain't nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you know, and I keep my composure. So just, I, my only recommendation is, is that you know, kind of a look. I don't. I'm not. I'm not saying that you don't, but kind of, uh, you know, like shed away the um the 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 yah ya, the fluff, and see what they're actually saying. Because I've learned too, um, learning in my personal progression and advance of of of, of scholarship and learning and knowledge, is that again, like I say in my last thing that I was with you, is that. Not only that you know that you're right, you also got to know when you're wrong. And then yeah. listen to your critics. Listen to your critics and what have you. And listen to your critics and be as objective as you possibly can. Because we're going to put this subjective in the defense wall in an act of denialism. But I've learned, too, like in, in scholarship, you got to learn of correspondence and, and listen to the critics. And if the critics, and they have something that, that has validity or credibility and is merited on that, then I look at it and say, damn, I'm kind of wrong or erroneous and I'm flawed and let me correct that. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So I listen to my critics though. I don't need no, no other. Ain't no Negro slaves gonna tell me what to do. They're not in a position to tell me what to do. Then they come over and get mad and angry and upset. Cause see, that's the bottom line. You got to be an African or you got to be a Muslim. I look, all that I gotta do is be black and die, nigga. That want to control and dominate. Tell you when to take a dump. <laughs> you know, tell you when to get up. Tell you when to scratch your ass. They definitely want to tell you when to scratch your ass too. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm not telling I'm not, I mean, I'm just trying to keep it real. I'm just yeah, trying to I keep know, it real. I don't know. Uh, Nobody comes to this platform and I try to tell them what to do. If you smoke, that's your business. If you, if you know, if you selling a little booty on the corner, hey, that's your business. I would suggest that you don't do that, but I mean, that's oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
Oh, boy, you, honey, you, you who ride it, ain't you there today, boy? You on one today, ain't you there snow? No, go ahead. Just begging for money. Getting with the women on YouTube and Instagram and whatever. Just hooking up with them, get a baby with them and leave them. They're a bunch of trash, just like the people that's lost out there in the streets. Ain't no difference. Except they said, black power, you black power trash. They don't pay child support. They barely, I can guarantee you, well, I don't have to get, I know how many black power folks on e getting EBT cards. I already know the ton of them on welfare. Talk about a law of black power, Mr. Farcon, with your food stamps in your hand at shopping day. I already know it. You know why? You know why? I was one of them. <laughs> so I, I was one of them. I had an EBT card, I had I had them food stamps, I had the EBT card and the food stamps. <laughs> 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 that's why, that's why I know. Oh boy. <laughs> so I don't know what to do with you, um. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.